So what we've done is we've activated the custom CSS module of Jetpack because that will allow us to um, to to edit our the design of our site a little easier. And notice now under the appearance menu we have editor. We've had editor before. And now we have edit CSS. Let's look at that. Hover over appearance and select edit CSS. And so under the Edit CSS item, we have the Custom CSS Editor. Uh, and so here is a link to learn how this works. Follow that link. Okay. Well, let's say that this is the place where we would edit our CSS. We can preview the result and then save it. So this is a little better than the built-in editor. However, this is only applicable to the CSS file. Remember, when you were under editor, we can edit any page, any file of our site, but usually, as I said, we usually edit the style CSS file. We can still edit the style CSS file in the plain old editor, but it's very archaic. If instead we go to appearance and then edit CSS, we get this more modern version where we can make edits, save it, and actually revert changes. We can see changes that we made a month ago and bring them back if we need to. It's still, however, not a drag-and-drop interface. It's still not an interface where you just click a button to make a change. It still requires that you have experience with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, specifically CSS. Uh, for example, let's do this. Let's see how this works. In the... Uh, in this edit CSS screen. It says welcome to custom CSS and it says line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Press enter at the end of line 5 two times so that we get a brand new line 7. And what we'll do is we'll write a little bit of CSS to change the text color um, throughout our site. Let's try it like this first. Let's type P space and then curly brace, which is shift square brace, which is next to the P. Uh, next to the P, there's a square brace and a curly brace. Hold down shift and click that square brace, and you'll get a curly brace. Press enter a couple times and close curly brace, which is shift square brace. So P, curly brace, open curly brace, close curly brace. And then on line 8, we will say color colon space red semicolon. Here we're saying all the paragraphs in our site, let's change the color, the text color, to red. So this is working with CSS, customizing the design of the site. We're saying the paragraphs, let's make their color red. Uh, we can click Preview, and look at that. Just another WordPress site becomes re become red. Welcome to our site became red. Not everything became red, but a few things became red, and that's because CSS is a big puzzle. One code interlocks with another code, and one code does so with another and maybe conflicts with another, or maybe one code supersedes another code, why didn't it change the color of this text here, perhaps, or this one here? Because there's many CSS rules in play automatically. Um, and so here we've said make our paragraphs red, but let's say after line 9, you can press enter a couple of times, line 11, Let's write h1, that's a number 1 right there. Notice everything here is lowercase so far. We'll type h1, comma, h2, comma, h3, comma, h4, comma, h5, comma, h6. We have six sizes of headings. So we're about to say, let's make all six of them behave the same. Space curly brace. Enter a couple of times, close curly brace. So the syntax of this is what are we affecting and how are we affecting it specifically. 
we're affecting all headings in the following way. Line 12. Let's say background dash color yellow. Click the preview button and see if any text becomes yellow. The headings should become yellow. Oh, let me check my preview. I didn't even I don't even see a yellow line. Does anyone see any yellow? Yeah. Right? Are the home pages in black text? Yeah. Black color because they're all in yellow Oh interesting. So yeah, like uh the home and leave yellow as well. Okay, so if you saw something good if you didn't, that's okay. As I said, this could be um, this could be complicated because it's a puzzle, all interlocking. I might have misspelled background, for example. Then it doesn't work because then the code is not right. Uh, background dash color yellow it looks okay. It's not really showing up, but that's okay. This is the challenge. Then this is why when I showed you level one, level two, level three, this is level two stuff. This is going in and editing the code and making these changes. And notice the price went from one dollar to three dollars, and then the 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 fifth, the third level went up to like six dollars, because that's even more complicated. Here I've got a starting point that I'm going to customize, and this is one of the things that takes a while with any particular client, any particular theme and such. So. If there were a part three to this class, we would spend a lot of time with this, um, learning some HTML, just enough that's important, and then getting in here and, and writing a lot of custom code and figuring out what's the right code that I need to edit. Because within every web browser, within every modern web browser, did you know that you can right-click, let's say if I, if I right-click um, the word home. If I right click that, we have, depending on your web browser, something that might say like inspect element. I'm going to right click inspect element. And what should pop up is some sort of screen that then shows you your code and also CSS. And so, in theory, this inspector is supposed to help me figure out how to make changes. Look at this. I found the place where I can change the home button very, very big. Now this is not applying directly to my code permanently. The code inspector, the element inspector of a web browser is temporary. But again, if there was a part three, we can get into detail about using the web browser to reverse engineer a particular theme to figure out what's the code I need to edit. It seems that it's entry title not heading 2 or heading 1, it seems to be entry title. And then I can write the appropriate code to fully customize it. So you see here, this home is background yellow, and this leave reply is background yellow. But this home word is purple, and this is black, and this one's black. So I just did something very quick there, but um, that's the advanced, that's the intermediate and an advanced. WordPress editing. That's what would be covered in a, in a future class, if there was a future class. There's only part one and part two at the moment, because as we see here, the classes get smaller and smaller. And at a certain point, if the class is too small, the class is canceled. Technically, at a level like this, the class should be canceled. But um, if the class goes on uh, at a small rate for more than two weeks, then the class should be technically canceled. Our dean, however, has been very 
um, very very good to us that most of the time our classes are not canceled even when they get this low because we have dedicated people. So, however, to make a part three, if all of you started on part three and then you start to drop out and there's four of you left, the class is going to get canceled. So we need a critical mass of people. Anyway, this obviously is much more advanced. Maybe you didn't even want to touch this. You just want to sell products. This is a completely different fork in the road. Uh, for how many of you, and you can be honest, how many of you, you don't really care about this. You don't want to learn this. You just want to sell products. For how many of you, this is kind of interesting. I want to learn more. Raise your hand few people. And that's cool. And if we had many more people in a class, we, we could do that in a future class. But this is going to be the tip of the iceberg um, because this is a whole, a whole big thing. This is as far as really we can go to customize a theme to explore the features, edit CSS, and then right-click inspect element. And it's a little bit of, uh, of sleuthing. A little bit of detective work. What's the right code to edit the right thing? As I browse here, I see, oh, reply title. Or maybe comment reply title is the appropriate code that I need to edit for this. When I'm over at the shopping cart, and, you know, I want more space between this text and this picture, I would use this element inspector to figure out there's that picture. It doesn't have enough padding. See, Mac padding says zero, but if I put padding or uh, if I put margin 10, now there's more space perhaps. But then now it's getting cropped because there's a column here. So again, much more effort for me to figure out the columns and the padding and all of this and all of this setup. But that's why the medium and advanced levels of WordPress customization are expensive. Um, if you do it from scratch level three, then you as a developer know exactly how it's all set up, but you need a lot of experience in those four languages. So if you go with level two, you can start with a starting point with some experience and reverse engineer it and further edit the site. And the cool thing about using this CSS editor is that when you save it, this is not affected by the WordPress updates. Remember that I said when you do an update on WordPress, it's going to erase all your customization. Except this. This is separate. This is protected. And it shows you here. There was an update at 2231 today. And when you come back tomorrow, you can still revert back to that in case you need to. When you come back a month later, you can still revert back to it. So this is an extra feature of Jetpack. It's not built into the main site. This plain old editor is pretty dumb. It doesn't have any undo. It doesn't have any color coding. You might say, well, color coding is just frosting on the cake. Color coding is imperative when you're dealing with a wall of code like that. That is hard to work with. But when, there's, when this is a certain color and that's a certain color, you can differentiate your, your code easy, more easily. Um, and it's separate. It's protected from the updates. It's limited, though, that it only affects CSS. It doesn't edit HTML. Perhaps there will be edit HTML on a future version of Jetpack. And once there is, I'm going to download it right away because I want that. Yes? Save Internally, it's not, I don't believe it's saved like a separate CSS file that you can actually access very easily. I believe it's saved within the database. So on a technical level, I, I wish it would create a separate CSS file for me to edit manually, but it's, it works and it's saved internally in their own database system, and I can just go back and edit it here as many times as I want. It's inserted almost like in line. Yes, as necessary. Um, just want to make sure that I understand correctly the one you said changes the changes you just made there you said cover the P, the H1, and the, 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 the class that you just launched for. Mm -hmm. you know, Entry that title. Um, you said they didn't have, they wouldn't make any change over uh, HTML code. How should you say? 
Yeah, because this is to tell the paragraph to be read. Right. It's not to tell it what's in the paragraph. Right, but then the, 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 the HTML code itself is going to be calling on this thing. Basically, the, the right to make the look of it, yeah, yes. So the HTML in, in, the, in the main editor, that's where we can write copyright Victor. But here is where we can write make that text read. So yes, the HTML does call this to make it fully present presented. But but this the CS, CSS code that we just wrote, then it should be updated now with the CSS file. This does it for us. Whatever we write here automatically updates that style CSS file, basically. That's why I like it better because then we don't have to manually edit that other file. It's all saved here centrally. But then when we have save, we have to click save instead of just preview, right? Because preview would just like you know make uh, yeah. allows the preview of the look. Exactly. If, if we, we like it, then we save. if we like it, if we like these weird changes here, then yes, then we'll click save style sheet and they'll be permanent. I see. Now, somewhere, um, the last thing that I'll mention, somewhere, okay, let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, up on the, the little um, notification of uh, updates, go ahead and click on it, the little spinning arrow. It tells us we've got notifications. Click there. And we've got some updates. Uh, nothing about WordPress core. It's already updated. Du uh, plugins. There's the duplicator plugin that needs an update. We won't do it, but just be aware of that. And then also, if we look at themes, oh, the Canyon theme does have an update. It's actually at 007 now. We have 005. So, new updates. If we had gone in to make edits to the Canyon theme, then they would get erased. Those edits that we made to the copyright, we edited those changes to the 2015 theme, not the Canyon theme. This always trips up beginners. I made my change and I put copyright Victor at the bottom of my site, but that was to the 2015 theme. If I switch from 2015 to Canyon, it's still going to say proudly powered by WordPress because it's a different theme. Each theme has its own footer, each theme has its own sidebar, etc, etc. So if we had made changes to Canyon and we did an update, they would go away. But notice, nowadays it tells you here, themes. Please note, any customizations you have made to the theme files will be lost. Please consider using child themes for modifications. And because of the nature of our time and so forth, we're not going to be able to do this ourselves, but if you click the link, Child Themes, it'll take you to the official WordPress documentation, the WordPress Codex, the full documentation over at WordPress.org. It's under Support Documentation. This is the whole manual of WordPress. This tells you everything about everything about WordPress. WordPress.org. So you would go to WordPress.org to read the manual, to look up themes or plugins, or to go to the help forums, where many, many, many helpful WordPress people are there ready to give help for free. So if you're having trouble with your site, you can go to the support forums and ask your question, and your question might have already been asked, and someone will say, look at this answer. Or if it is a unique uh, error, people might try to help you. Now, it is free, it is community-driven, so it might not, you might not get a response in one day, it might take a few days or a week or something, but there are many helpful people here. And at the moment, what we're looking at is the documentation of child themes, and it's a little technical and a little wordy, but this is the preferred way to have a child theme that whatever edits we make do not get erased when we update the original theme. As I said, we're not going to get into doing it ourselves. The documentation is here. And this is the thing that, again, I come back to the question that I've asked before. Are you sure you want to be the, the next Amazon? Because Amazon has a team of engineers working 24 hours a day, I guess, to make sure Amazon.com is always working all over the world. If a, site, if a page on the site breaks, someone's on it right away to fix it. Now you're Amazon. You're going to need to manage your site. 
if some page breaks, if some file is corrupted, if some uh, link is broken, you're going to have to deal with it. So for example, this stuff about managing the design of your theme, the best way to do it is with a child theme, but it's going to be a little technical, a little wordy, but all the explanation is here. And this is what we always do in my company with a client, because if we sell them on package number two, let's go choose a great plug, uh, let's go choose a great theme, and then we'll customize it. All those customizations are happening in a child theme. Especially when you need to edit the HTML. So if you have taken the two classes, part one and part two, part one was an introduction to all the basics of WordPress and to WAMP because we've got a development environment that we want to work with instead of a live site. The basic interface and screens and concepts of WordPress in part one. In part two, we talked about more advanced concepts of WordPress and e-commerce and then this even more advanced stuff that we're out of time for, but this is a lifelong learning thing. WordPress, 20% market share or so globally, so hundreds of millions of sites worldwide, a robust marketplace of plugins and themes and developers and support people, and it's all at WordPress.org. So this site that we've developed together here if it were ready for prime time, I would go through the process of getting an account on a real provider, and I think I've talked about it before, but mentioning it again briefly, Bluehost.com, GoDaddy.com, HostMonster.com. Those are three providers that my company has personally worked with. All three of them we've had experience with. They work really well. Different price tiers and features, but all of them provide you very similar services, different prices, a .com for $2.99 for example, this one over here, $3.95 a month for more features, zombie tech support, and um, there's plenty more other of them out there, there's dozens, hundreds of providers out there, Yahoo's a provider also, you can get a space directly from WordPress.com too. There's Wix, there's Squarespace, etc., etc. There's so many providers out there. But once you've got yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you might be answering this now, but uh, I, I just don't know how you FTP your 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 web your WordPress site up to. It's going to depend on each provider. Some of them have something known as cPanel, control panel, cPanel, which is uh, there'll be a screen there that says file upload. You upload it. Some of them will say, use your favorite FTP program, like FileZilla or, or CyberDuck or whatever, and some of them have other ways. So all of these are going to be a little, a little different, but they're all the same concept, and there's plenty of help files and tech support. I know with GoDaddy, at least, for example, I call them up at midnight and get an answer. Yeah. Um, you know, all of these are 24-7 24, 24 tech support. They've got a phone number right here and a live chat. Um, GoDaddy's in Arizona, one time zone away, so I, I call them up, get this, get these answers. So that again is, this is where everyone varies and we can only go as, as a certain point, but we've got this site, we want to get it live, that would be again for part three, where we can go into much more detail into, let's set up an account, let's upload it. But these guys have 24-hour tech support, they can walk you through it all. And in the grand scheme of it all, if you didn't have any WordPress experience, you've learned a lot. If you've had, had some Word exp WordPress experience, you've probably still learned a lot. There's still more to learn. Um, the WordPress Codex is one of the great best places to, to learn. And books, of course, and other classes. Yes? What is the purpose of the Codex? It's the manual. It's the documentation about everything. If I go over to documentation, it's going to be divided into chapters. These are the features, here's the frequently asked questions, uh, how do I work with child themes, what are, what are permalinks, all of that. So it's all the manual. So it's called Codex WordPress Manual? 
you can go to directly to wordpress.org and then it's going to be under the support documentation which is codex.wordpress.org yes you can also find lots and lots of tutorials on YouTube you may be using YouTube to share the latest funny cat pictures but you can go or videos but you can go to YouTube and look up how to install WAMP how to transfer my WAMP to GoDaddy people have written those uh, people have created those videos people get YouTube famous and actually make money from YouTube by putting out videos for free for people to 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 educate themselves so use YouTube also as a learning tool not just sharing the latest funny memes question so if you have a business existing business but whether you're just starting out with one would you recommend going with a reputable host provider versus let me ask. Probably reduce your risk of them having a stoppage, which would affect all their clients at some point, or a buyout merge kind of a situation. Let me ask you this: If you had retirement savings, would you uh, go with a reputable um, CPA, or would you go with mom and pop ABC CPA? Okay. You pay for Yes, so there's so many providers out there. There's local providers, and usually I would recommend things like, you know, shop local and small business shopping and such. Contribute, uh, you know, frequent the small businesses, except for service providers. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the local mom and pop shops. Uh, I would recommend the big ones because of economies of scale, they can provide more hard drive space faster internet speeds, more tech support. You might get amazing tech support from the local people. They may stay with you on the phone for five hours. Amazing. But they just don't have the infrastructure to have your website available 24 hours a day like the big ones. And anyway, the local providers are still going to go through the big ones anyway. The road to get on the on the internet, actually there's, relatively speaking, very few gatekeepers to let you into the internet and so if you've got these small providers they're still going with the big ones to get their access so I would just say go with the big companies they're all very competitive there's many pros and cons about them all but I would go with the big ones and these are just three ones there's still other big ones out there you can always do a search for top five internet service providers and I bet these three will, will be in the top five but you'll see other ones and there's a discussion about how much to pay and all of that. I would say start with the lowest price in the beginning and then see how that works out for you and then revisit in three months or so. Are you happy with the service? If your site is your site too slow or people complaining about the traffic of your site and such, you might then have to pay a little bit more for more resources. Just like when you buy a laptop, the more you pay on your laptop, the faster it'll be, the more responsive, the more powerful. When you buy service here, you're buying basically the use of a computer. How much RAM does it have? How much CPU does it have? You start with the lowest price and you're going to get adequate results, good results, useful results. But the more you pay, the more processing power you get on your little piece of the internet and more CPU and more RAM and all of that. You can easily be paying $100 a month on your internet bill, $1,000 a month on your internet bill, or $5 a month. And I would start with the lowest price, check it out, review every quarter, every three months and see how it's working and if it's not good enough you need to invest a little bit more but the good thing is that nowadays this is so affordable five years ago ten years ago twenty years ago this was outlandishly expensive now because there's so much competition you can get a website for three dollars twenty years ago you'd be paying thirty dollars or more now of course you still pay lots of money for for certain names but in general these are some good prices dot club dot org dot co dot news literally there is also dot xyz so you can get my company dot xyz so which dot do you recommend the thing is that .com is the recommended one, but 
most of the dot coms are taken. After 25 years of dot coms, there's so few of them. Like if I was Victor's Bakery, if my family had Victor's Bakery for 50 years, mm -hmm. but we decided to get it this year, it's probably taken 10 years ago. So that's that's gone. Dot net, fine. Dot co. Because dot biz. It is yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some of these words are very common, and they might have been taken. So I might have to think of more creative words, or go with a dot net or, or dot biz or whatever. Unfortunately, the thing is that most of the general public only thinks there's a dot com. They don't know there's dot biz and all of that. So you have to make sure you, in your marketing, in your social media, in your menu, everywhere, it's very obvious dot net, so that people don't go to the dot com, which is not you. So any name will work, basically, but the .com is more desirable, but it's probably taken. So .co, .biz, there's .us, uh, there's a list somewhere, but uh, .asia, .xyz, .arrow, .tools, but no one's going to remember that. What's your website again? Victor.com? Victor no, it's Victor.tools. You're just going to need to say it over and over and over on your business card, on your Twitter, on your website, everywhere. Victor.tools. So as we wrap up today, I'm going to do a backup one more time of my site if you want a copy of it. Any general questions? Yes, I'm also, what I wrote here, I'm going to add it to the network folder, these notes here and today's site and we're going to wrap up. Last thing that we'll do here is I'm going to request that if you have any feedback um, on this class, I, I ask that you that you go that you search rate my professor Victor Campos and I'm going to have a profile at ratemyprofessors.com and I've got a profile for this campus which is San Diego Continuing Education and Southwestern College. This is not Southwestern College so if you are going to give a rating, an opinion, or feedback on this class make sure you do it in the San Diego Continuing Education link not the Southwestern College one unless you took a class of mine there. And when it asks you the name of the class, you can just write WordPress 2, or if it asks you the code, the code of the class is 5893G. And it's WordPress 2. That's optional, it's anonymous. It's useful for me to uh, improve my classes in the future so that I can uh, give better classes, and I think maybe the, the bosses look at it too. Uh, and so uh, that's the end of the course. Basically, make sure you enrolled, I mean, make sure you signed in today. And uh, I'm going to put my work in the folder and add my video, and we'll do like uh, two minutes of lab time. And then I've got to get going, but uh, thank you for taking the class. Hopefully I'll see you in a future class. Oh, which reminds me, future class. If you look at the school's catalog, well, I've got a class every day, basically, but let's see what's coming up for next Monday. Next Monday, the first, oh, the e-commerce class starts over with part one again. So if you missed part one, you can come back to it. If you want to take part one again, great, I'll take you back. You can, you can take these classes as many times as you want. So if you've still got this Monday free next, next month, it starts again. If you would like to learn about SEO, like I've mentioned, I've got web marketing, blogging for, for SEO, um, blogging, that's going to be on Fridays. Apparently, I don't have any Wednesday class next month. It's going to be a short month next month because of the holiday, I guess. So I've got Monday class, Friday class. Tuesday, Thursday is part three of my Android class. You probably don't want that unless you took part one and part two, or unless you like to feel frustrated. Uh, and then for some reason, on, 
uh, on the next month it is web marketing but that's supposed to say web marketing e-commerce part two I'm going to tell them to update that but the part two class is going to come again on the 30th of next month so if you want to take this class again you're welcome to in in about a month and then in December we've got social media class advanced Google class SEO class uh, the part two of the social media and then in January and you see they cycle the classes happen every month they change around and so forth different days and times check check the catalog I would check the, the digital catalog not the printed one the digital catalog can go out of date the digital catalog is at sdce.edu just look up my last name it'll show you all my classes and again thank you for taking the class sticking it out for eight weeks or so Hope to see you in a future class. You're welcome.